Hello everyone, let's continue on learning how to use uh, CAD Nano and what we're going to try to do today is create just a simple 2D uh, square. So what we're going to do, uh, I, already got, I got a little bit of head start and uh, all I did was uh, hit the square to get the square lattice and then I double click down in a straight line uh, on these helices to make uh, my basis here to get my strand started. So now that we're pretty much done with this uh, window here, so now I'm going to collapse it a bit. And it gives me more space to uh, work with this. So what we're going to do, we want to stretch these uh, strands out. And we could do this by dragging the ends. Or a much more simpler way to do all of them is just by holding the Shift-Alt key together and then double clicking on the slider here okay so now that that's done we want to do is start connecting these strands to each other because remember we got to one, make one continuous loop out of all of these and that's the that's uh, the basis for any structure that you do either 2d or 3d so if we look at here what we want to do is get here to this base here. This slider just tells you the position on uh, your DNA basis. So it gives you from uh, zero to one, but for the most part, it could be out of the way here. But what we want to do is go to these here, what we call crossover points. And you could tell that which, where these crossovers lead to. So this is, this tells you right here that the crossover is going to, it's going to close off the crossover going in this direction. So look at the direction of the L. So it crosses over in here, makes a loop coming into towards the center and it crosses from, you're in the zero position, but this one tells you it goes to the one, all right? And in the one, it tells you this one goes up to the zero. So that's what these crossover points do. So what we're gonna do is go select number two uh, and position two and then go down to three because we wanna connect two and three. And we keep going down. We're going to keep doing this for the rest of the DNA, for the structure. So it looks like we don't need uh, this strand here, number 10, because it doesn't have another one to pair to. We could add another one, but just because for simplicity, let's just delete this one. So what we do is we select it. We select the end here and just hit delete on your keyboard and it's gone. And now we're going to go to the other side and do the same thing and connect these over here. Okay, so now we have all this excess stuff that we could select and then delete. And we're just getting rid of it by I'm just highlighting them and selecting them and delete them with my keyboards. Okay, so now we have these two hooked up and these two hooked up, but we they're still not does it makes a continuous loop between itself, these two, and they have all different continuous loops, but they don't connect with each other. So what we're gonna do now is that on the one position, because it's the one closest to two, we're gonna have these crossover points here. And what I like to do when it comes to shapes, I want I try to stay as symmetrical as possible. Uh, what you could do if you want to make this more symmetrical because you can see here that the center looks like it's around in this area right here But we don't have a crossover point between one and two here So you what you could do is is expand is delete these crossovers here by selecting them and deleted them and then adding more bases by clicking on this gray arrow over here but for our for the cases in this tutorial, it doesn't you don't need to do that. Uh, so we're just learning how to use these tools and see them in action. Uh, so let's create some crossovers here. Let's say we want to cross over here, and then and you see see the uh, the idea I'm going for here. Now there's a continuous loop between these four here from zero to three because it goes here. You have to follow along the track. And you're doing the same thing here and it's it just a closed loop so let's continue this closed loop now so now we come over here where we had 
the three and four position. If you look at that now, we have all these six of them here, all in one continuous loop. And we're going to continue this. Idea. And this is the same technique that you want to use for every single uh, shape that you make. And as, as the shape gets more complicated, you get more elaborate. Okay, so there's that's it. That's your si simple square. So one thing you have to keep in mind that even though everything has like big gaps in between, like there's gaps here and here, like these are huge gaps and these gaps are a little bit smaller. In in the real world, when you when the actual DNA forms, these gaps are are, are very tight. There, there's there, there's like a hairpin turns here. They're not these big giant uh, crossovers. It's hairpin. Uh, the DNA just it crunches up, so everything looks solid. It, it might not look solid here, but if you look at DNA origami structures, they look pretty solid. You can see the the path that DNA takes if you look really closely on. Uh, on images of actual DNA that origami that's been formed in the lab. But for here, this is just for display purposes, makes everything easier to work with. So don't worry when you see these huge spaces. These huge spaces don't exist. Uh, they, they will, your shape will look like a square. It's like zooming out. If I were to zoom out uh, very far, this will eventually look like a square. You're just basically close in uh, because your resolution is so low or, or you're so into looking at that you can look at all the spaces. Okay, so let's continue. So now we have to put in the staples that will basically help us uh, form form this. Uh, and so to add the staples, which is the staple strands that are going to bind everything together, we hit the auto staple button up here. And you have all these colored staples. So you notice that there's difference between these two sta uh, certain staple strands. Do you have the little skinny ones and you have the really highlighted ones here, uh, the thicker lines. Uh, these thicker lines mean that they're either too long or too short and from what is explained to me it has to deal with stability and these lines can be too long or too short so what we have to do is we have to cut them down so what we do to cut them down is hit the outbreak tool here the scissors here and it's going to ask you what your target length you want it to be usually we want our target length to be around uh our max should be like 40, uh, but let's just say let's have like let's go for 35 as our target length. So yeah, I think it's a good, a good gives us good slack be uh, uh, between our max and our and our min. So our minimum length you want it to be 20, no less than 20. Your 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 staple strength should be no less than 20. Your max length, like I just mentioned before, no more than 40. So we're gonna change that. Right there, that should be our max. And the distance between crossover tells you, well, if you have, if you, if your, if your shape gets more intricate and there's different parts where things will have to cross over, how many distances do you want uh, for your crossover? And you don't want your crossovers to be too close because that'll make your shape unstable. So you want to, you know, be reasonable with your crossover. The more the better. Um, but a distance of three here will not harm us because we only have a few sets of crossovers over here in the center. And we hit OK. Oh, and so we got very lucky that it looks like all our um, strands are have a pretty good length. Uh, so like, let's see right here. So if you want to look at the length of a specific strand, all you have to do is Make sure that your uh, strand is selected over here on top, and you click on that. Or let's let's look at uh, here. Let's look at this one right here. This gray one right here. We click on it, it highlights it, and it tells you down here. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not by clicking it, but but just mousing over it. If you look at the bottom left corner, you can see the length of strands that I'm above. So if you look at the at the blue one. It says 850. That's the, how big my whole uh, scaffold strand, which is a blue strand, is. How long, how many bases there is completely. But if I highlight over this red one here, or another one, let me see if I could find out. Let me see if I could trigger it. Oh, there it is. So at, as a length of 32 bases, which is good. So everything looks good. And every once all your highlighted strands are gone and everything looks good, you're ready to add a sequence to this. Uh, to add a sequence, first you have to break uh, the 
the uh, scaffold strand, so the blue part. And this this break it doesn't actually translate to the real world when it comes to the to the scaffold strand. It's just a place where the sequence can start. So what we do is hit the break tool, and we click on a position here. And now we have your uh, three prime end and your five prime end. Your five prime end is the uh, square, and your three prime end is the uh, triangle with the arrow tip. So now that we have this, we had we hit the sequence button, and we always be, when we hit the sequence button, we want to go to the five prime end here. And what we're going to do is click on it. And because you're going to be working with the M13 bacteria, you uh, you want to select this one. This is the one that usually most DNA origami is used. But there's other sequences that you could do. Uh, and after that, you just hit apply. And if you zoom in, you can see your DNA sequences. And that is, for the most part, that's pretty much it here. Now you're ready to export this file. Uh, and save it. So what you do is you click the export and we give it a name. I name my tutorial square and I'm going to just save it to my desktop and it's, after that it gets saved and then on the next part, we're going to talk about looking at your DNA in as an Excel file and then uploading it to a program called CanDo where you can see a simulation of your structure. Uh, so this concludes this part of this lecture.